Welcome to another Footprints video. On this video, we're gonna go through basic features on Footprints and how to get started. At the moment that you log in, you're gonna be going directly to your home screen. You're gonna be able to see that at this moment we have logged in with a system admin account. In your home screen, you're gonna be able to see several tabs, administration, calendar, home, and more. In your home screen, you are going to be able to see your search options. Like at this moment, I have my workspaces that contain the tickets that I have logged in. In an administration tab, we are going to be able to see several containers. Business process, workspaces, address book, knowledge bases, service portfolios, and CMDBs. We can go ahead and configure and customize each one of them. At this moment, we are going to go directly to workspaces. On workspaces, if we click on manage, we're going to be able to see what containers we have already created. For example, at this moment, I have service desk and change management. Within this area, we can go ahead and create either new of them or delete them. For example, to create a new one, we're going to click on Create New in the top left. We're going to specify the container's name. At this moment, I'm going to put in Test, and we're going to click on Create. It's going to take a couple of seconds, and it will also depend on your environment. And it's going to create a default record definition calling Ticket. Once we're finished creating our workspace, it's really important that we click Save and Publish. It's going to ask us for a confirmation. We select Yes. And it's going to let us know in the bottom right at the moment that we have already published this. Or when it's done, if we have any error or warning, it's going to put it in the bottom right. And we can go ahead and identify it or change if we have any error. At this moment, since it's a basic container, we have zero errors and zero warnings. Once we have created our container, we're going to be able to see that in the published status is yes, because we was published previously. And if we open it, we can go ahead and be able to see on record definitions that we have what we have created. For example, in our service desk, we have incident, problem, and service request. With this record definitions, we can go ahead and, and edit them. For example, if we double click on new item, we're going to be able to see we have forms, fields, business rules, work of processes, quick templates, and all of these options that we can go ahead and change or edit during our workspace creation or edit. In this part of the forms is really, really important because we have an agent web and customer web that is the ones that our customers mostly use, but also agent mobile. Within these forms, if we access them, we're going to be able to see our fields where we can go ahead and add them, remove them, what kind of field it is, so if we're able to see it's a field label that it, this could be changed at any moment. Short description, one of the things we can go ahead and do from here is go ahead and create a new field in case that we need it. We have several options. For example, at this moment, I'm gonna create a dropdown. We can go ahead and put them at any part that we want, top, the bottom, for example, I'm going to go ahead and put it just below incident number. If we're able to see it, this is a brand new field and we need to go ahead and start doing the settings. For example, at this moment, I'm going to create a new field called software. It doesn't contain any field bound to. We have two options. If we have something previously created, we can go ahead and link to it or we can go ahead and create a new field. I'm going to create a new field, also called software. We're going to put in single select, so our customers or agents just select one of the options. The permissions is optional. Let me remind you that you can go ahead and change these options at any moment. If we're going to have a default value. 
Okay. And we're going to select the choices. At this moment, I'm going to create just three choices. I don't know, one, two, and three. We're going to add the choices, and we're going to be able to see that it goes directly to the bottom. You can add or remove choices at any moment. Once we finish with this, we're going to click on Save. And this is going to take us back directly to your agent form, clicking on here. If we're able to see a field label is software, field bound to software that we just created, we can go ahead and define a default value and edit some options, for example, to be one, two columns, depending on your needs. Okay, if you wanna add some help text, any kind of choices are available here. We're gonna hit and save. This is gonna let us know that it's done. We're gonna go back to our service desk option and click on save and publish. Once again, once we have done change or move anything on our forms or any option, we need to go ahead and save and publish. This is gonna let us save our options directly to our main screen so our agents or our customers are able to see it. At the moment that it's done, it's going to let us know in the top, in the bottom right, if we have any options. For example, at this moment, I'm able to see warnings. If we click on more information, we're going to be able to see if we have anything that we need to adjust. Just by putting your mouse here, is going to let us know exactly what happened and how can we adjust it in order to fix this issue. If we want to see exactly how the form has been done, we can go to Home once again, click on Actions, New, Service Desk Incident, that is the one that we have been configuring, and we are going to be able to see that our new bill has been added. For example, in software, we have the options of what we have just basically added. If we click on Submit, a new ticket has been created. We can go ahead and click on it. And this is the option we have selected previously, that is the number two. In our administration tab, We're going to be able to see several options, user management, portal management, and system management. These are going to be really important at the moment that we are configuring our system. For example, on users, we have just at this moment the system administrator, that is the one that I am currently logged in, but we can go ahead and add any user at any moment. We're going to select these fields, that is the system role. This will depend on the permissions that we want to give to the user. At this moment, I'm going to create an agent with a license type fixed. You're going to be able to see also that if you create a customer, there's no license type required. We're going to go ahead and give the agent name a user ID that they're going to need in order to log in. The authentication method at this moment I'm using internal, that is footprints, but we can go ahead and select something else. We're going to provide them a password. And also add the primary email account. This is in order to them to receive notifications. We're gonna make sure that we select this, send notifications to this address, this is totally optional. And we're gonna assign the permissions to each container. For example, at this moment, we have just working with service desk. So we're gonna select the service desk role. We're gonna select what do we want to give them, agent. We have also these options, but at this moment, I'm going to select agent with a supervisor. 
We have also these options, language, local time zone, and the format, that there are totally be something we can go ahead and edit, and language that they have, and any time zone that they have. Any format. We're going to click on Save. And we're able to see that a new, a, uh, new user has been created just on the top of it. We will also need to go ahead and check the permissions. This is in order to tell them exactly what are going to, they're going to be able to do in our system. We're going to go to roles, to our service desk, that is on the second page. And we're going to select service desk agent. That is the one that we have just given to the user. We're going to click on edit. This is a really, really important part where we need to go ahead and tell them whether they're going to be able to see, what are they going to be able to create, delete. If you see, if we select the option all, everything else is going to set to no, but this one, it's going to relate that they have all this access. So at this moment, my agent account has view and access to everything, create access to everything, edit to some of the fields. If we are going to be able to see the organizational unit is set to no. And they're not able to delete the items. Again, you can go ahead and change these permissions at any moment that you need. Once you finish saving your permissions, you're going to hit and save. Same thing, it goes for field permissions. If they want, you want them to access to anything on a specific of the fields that you have created. Okay. Common permissions. Usually this is set on no, because our agent shouldn't have access to our administration system. Same thing for with workflow permissions. They're usually set up to yes, but you can go ahead and make any changes at any moment that you, you need. At the moment that you finish, click on save. On our container, we have some other features so that we can go ahead and use. One of the, the most popular with our customers that they go with, it's business rules. On business rule, it's going to be a rule that it's going to take an action depending on our settings. For example, at this moment, we have one that is set priority to one. So we're going to make sure that we have a trigger that in this case is on create and on update, if our urgency and impact is high, set field value to critical. So if the ticket meets the criteria, urgency high and impact high, our field value is going to set up to one critical. Let's try it. So in home, in our service as incident, We are going to go ahead and create an impact high, urgency high. Automatically, it's changing our priority to one. That is critical. That's exactly what the business rule is doing. If we click on submit, and we go back to our incident two, we have just created on our history. We're going to be able to see priority set critical to one. We have some other features that we can go ahead and use 
on an administration like address books, CMDB, search portfolios, knowledge bases. The same way you can go ahead and manage them, create new, delete them in case it is necessary. Same thing with our knowledge bases. If we click on manage, create new, delete them. This is basically a big idea of what can be done in part of getting started directly with footprints.